Hiya, so today we're going to be looking at how our off-grid solar power system does in winter. It's a beautiful sunny day in January and we're going to measure it through the day, see how much power we bring in and um, yeah, it's about minus one at the moment. It's uh, just gone eight in the morning. Uh, sunrise was officially 7.59. Um, it is cold. Uh, it's going to be six degrees a day and um, yeah, so we're going to see how it gets on. My name's Rachel. I live here in this woodland off grid with my husband Fraser and our daughter Grace. Um, we have a solar power system which we installed in the summer of 2021. So this is our first winter with our um, solar power system in place and we're just seeing how we're getting on. We're going to um, try and put enough load onto the batteries today so they don't get fully charged uh, so that we avoid that trickle charge uh, because we want to see exactly what we can bring in through the day. So our off-grid solar power system is made up predominantly of Victron components. We use the Victron Quattro 10 kVA 48 volt inverter. We are using the Victron Serbo GX with touchscreen as well. Um, we find that particularly useful to help us chart how we're getting on, our usage, our battery charge and all that sort of thing. So that's really useful. Our batteries are Pylon Tech. Uh, we use the Pylon Tech US 3000C. Uh, if you've seen any of our previous videos, you'll know that's not been without its problems, but um, we're working through those and hopefully we will get those resolved eventually. We found the Victron stuff particularly reliable. If you are considering solar, we would really recommend them. It's not the cheapest option by any means, but so far we found their stuff to be really reliable, well-made and, um, and easy to use and easy to set up. And as people who didn't go for a kit and decided to make our own system, um, the Victron stuff has made that really easy to do. So it's about quarter past eight in the morning and as you can see the sun is just starting to hit those frosty panels. Okay so this is the view on the uh, Victron Serbo GX. Uh, this can be accessed via the Victron Energy app which we're doing at the moment and also we've got the touch screen up in the barn loft as well which helps us keep an eye on things. Uh, so as you can see, not a lot of what's coming in at the moment, 56% um, in the batteries and our load is about 1044 watts. But hopefully as we go through the day that will pick up and the sunshine will continue. So it's now about 10 o'clock in the morning, just after, and as you can see, panels are in beautiful sunshine. They've not been in full sunshine all morning though because we have had some cloud cover come across. So that will probably affect what the um, stats are looking like on the Servo GX. So we'll have a little look. Okay, so back to the um, Victron Servo GX via the Victron Energy app. Uh, we have depleted to 54% batteries, but as you can see now, we've got lots coming in on the solar panels. So we've got lots of uh, watts coming in through the PV charge um, and our load has dropped. So hopefully um, the batteries will charge up nicely. Okay, so it's now just gone 12 o'clock in the afternoon. As you can see, it's totally clouded over, which is a real shame because we were having a really productive day, but can't be helped. And um, we'll have a look on the Serbo GX and see what's coming in now. But obviously there'll have been a big drop. Yeah, so as you can see, the uh, PV has dropped right down to about 400 watts. Um, so we're still, we're still charging the batteries, but minimal amount. So um, a real shame that it's clouded over. Hopefully the cloud will clear and uh, the day will pick up a little bit and we'll get a little bit more charge into those batteries. Okay, so it's now two o'clock in the afternoon. Still got some cloud cover, so um, not a huge amount of solar coming in. And also the sun has moved right round now, so it's not our best time of day anyway. Yep, so as predicted, um, the charge coming in has improved a little bit. We've got 677-ish watts coming in, meaning we're charging 476-ish uh, watts into our batteries. Um, however, like I said, the sun has moved around now. It's not our optimal time of day anymore. Unfortunately, that cloud cover came over just on the best part of our day where the sun really hits those panels. Um, sun's gone down and as you can see, this is the overview for our production and consumption through today. Um, the red shows the consumption, the um, yellow shows the solar and the blue line shows the charge of the battery. We consumed 6.6 .6 kilowatt hours, so our consumption was more than our production today. However, 
one of the reasons for this is because we did do some washing today we wanted to make sure that the batteries didn't fully charge because um, once the batteries are fully charged the solar production drops down to a trickle charge we can't see the full potential of our system this was very much the case through the summer and when we've looked back at our summer data it looked like we actually produced more in October than we did in June and July and that's just not the case but once the batteries fill and it drops to a trickle charge it means that we can't see exactly what the potential of our system is. Okay so it is the next day and uh, a really similar day to day as it was yesterday started out beautifully clear and then has greyed over slightly as the day has continued. I tend to find with the videos on usage that they raise more questions than they answer. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and we'll try and answer. Also, if you have anything else that you'd like us to cover, please let us know. Um, some people have asked about our yearly usage and to be honest, we don't know yet because we've only had the system up and running since June. Um, so anything that we talk about in that sort of long-term sense is going to be estimating at the moment and um, we want what we share to be really accurate so we're going to think about how we could share a bit more of a long-term view with you as to how we're getting on we have a range of videos about our solar power system about its installation and the um, components that we've used if you'd like to know more about that i'll put a link in the description below to some of those videos we also have a kit.co page which has a list of most of the components that we have used um, including fuses which we found one of the trickier parts to work out what we were doing so if you'd like to have a little look at that then please do we're also going to talk about the suppliers that we used as we've noticed there's been a few questions about which suppliers are reliable we did a real mix and match when it came to suppliers so we are hoping to do a video on that and talk through how we got on with each of those so that can help people make a more informed decision too if you found this video useful please um, consider subscribing and um, we'd love to have you join our journey and um, thanks for watching